Hey guys, have you ever wanted to know how to make a luxury swimsuit? Stay watching this video because I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide using the skim swimsuit as the inspiration. So for this swimsuit, I've chosen a life recycled fabric, which is made from uh, Econil, which is recycled plastic bottles, bags, and fishing nets. Then I've used a Alicante net for the lining of the swimsuit. Uh, what most of you probably won't know is that when you do swimsuits is that there is a rubber, a specific swimwear rubber that goes on the thigh lines, armholes, necklines. Uh, I've used a, uh, a plush black uh, bra, bra tape. And then I've got my uh, two sets of, uh, what are these called, uh, rings and sliders. So I start off by laying down my uh, my net uh, underneath my uh, lycra. So basically, I'm going to cut both layers at the same time. Uh, alternatively, you guys can uh, cut your lining separately if you so choose. Um, there, there's a couple of ways to uh, make these kind of swimsuits. You can either have it what's called a bagged out finish, which is where you have almost like a no visible stitching uh, showing, or you've got what's called uh, an overlock and fold over finish, uh, which is where you have either a zigzag finish that you see from the outside or a cover stitch. Now, most high street companies will use uh, an overlock and fold technique because it's just quicker to do in manufacturing. Uh, the more luxury brands, they will tend to do a bagged out finish. Now, um, I'm going to use that technique when making this swimsuit. Um, as you can see, I'm cutting the pattern out. I've taken my time to um, almost guess um, how, how skins have done uh, the, the shaping for this, for this swimsuit. Uh, I'm actually going to do a video at, at a later date showing you how to make the pattern for uh, this swimsuit. Uh, and if you notice, I've, I've laid the fabric on top of the paper. Now, this is what you would do at a professional level, and especially with this kind of fabric, because lycras, they tend to move about when you're, when you're cutting them. But if you put them on paper, uh, this paper is called underlay paper. Uh, the, the fabric moves a lot less. And I know there's this rule that you're not meant to use paper scissors to cut fabric and vice versa but that goes out the window because when you're doing your cutting you cut around your pattern piece but you cut through the uh, paper and the fabrics now as you notice i don't use pins when cutting um, and that's just because I, I just find that they get in the way. So I tend to use weights uh, strate strategically placed in a particular part of the, the pattern just to keep everything kind of sandwiched together. So this is where I did a little test just to check that the tension was okay on the overlocker. I'm, um, I've, I've done a hold of stitch uh, attaching the, uh, the the elastic to my lycra, and I'm running it through the ov overlocker just to t check that the tension is fine, so that when I eventually pull it, the uh, the thread isn't going to snap. Now you can get uh, swimwear rubber from anywhere really. Uh, eBay, uh, there's a few uh, places online that sell it as, as well. So here I've laid my uh, front and back pieces um, individually, uh, along with the um, net, the matching net. And then I've started just by sewing my uh, crotch together. Now what you can do is when you're overlocking your side seams, your crotch, you can actually use what's called Framelon, uh, which is that clear, um, clear, clear rubber. I chose not to do that for this um, demonstration. But one thing you should remember is when you're sewing a, a bagged out garment, uh, you want there to be um, an opening somewhere in the lining so that you can turn the garment inside out, uh, sew it, and then turn it the right way around and close it. 
if you're sewing a garment using overlock and fold technique, then you don't need to have that opening in the lining because you'd have the opening um, somewhere else. And this is why High Street tend to uh, do the um, overlock and stitch finish because it, it requires less, less fiddling. So I think that's me just finishing off the lining for uh, my swimsuit. Now I'm uh, tackling the outer fabric for my swimsuit, making sure right sides, right sides are together. And when you're sewing uh, lycra, it's quite obvious. It's a bit more difficult when you're sewing black fabric because um, generally uh, black is more difficult to um, spot flaws or differences but always make sure you've got a good light uh, when you're sewing. Um, ideally, you want a, a light that has a, a daylight bulb. Cool. So what I'm doing at this point, I've stitched my outer, outer swimsuit together and then I've stitched my uh, lining swimsuit and I've done a holding stitch for, the, for one side of the thigh line and now I'm overlocking my uh, rubber onto the thigh line. And notice I'm just doing it on one side for now. But what you haven't seen is that I've pre-measured the uh, length of the, of the rubber um, according to my pattern so that uh, I'm not sewing the rubber uh, any shorter or longer than what the finished measurement is meant to be. So the thing is, is at this point it gets really fiddly. So um, fabric, well, fabric like lycra, it does its own thing. So I guess guys, if you feel that you need to um, pin the fabric before you sew it, then by all means do that. I just remember I've been sewing for 20 years, so uh, you probably won't ever see me using pins in any of my tutorials. So I think I'm just getting to, what is that, a crotch seam there. That, that first holding stitch is really important because that's holding the lining and the outer fabric together. Um, otherwise I'll, I'll be juggling three different things, the lining, the outer fabric and the rubber. And as you see, yeah, uh, what you won't see in the, in the camera is that I've got a marking uh, where it meets exactly where I've started. Cool. So if you give that a pull, just check that the overlock attention is good. And that's your uh, thigh line for at least one of your sides sewn. Now, when you do the other side, because you're doing a bag that technique, you have to turn the swimsuit the right way around and then go into the swimsuit from that hole that I uh, told you to do in the lining and then pinch the crotch on the inside and then bring it out and then do your um well the other side of your thigh line now this side is more difficult to do because we've already done one side of side of our thigh line And you can see the other side on the on the left there, where you can see that uh, grey uh, rubber peeping through. What you'll find is most people uh, who uh, make lycra products only specialize in lycra products because of the kind of machines that you need to uh, use and also it's a very particular skill set um, it's not often that you get someone who can sew lycra that can do tailoring or that can sew a silk dress so uh, without tooting my horn um, I'm, I'm in that one percentile so. So literally how you'll see me make this uh, swimsuit is, is how they would make it in the factory. It's, I think if you've got a domestic overlocker, uh, sewing the rubber in will be quite tricky, but it is possible. Perfect. So I just wanted to see at this point how the garment is looking, just in case that there are any areas it's not too late to fix. So I popped on the mannequin, 
just to check that the, the proportions are right, just to check that there's no pucker in. Cool, so you can see the, the shape coming on quite nicely there. That's my uh, mesh underneath, that mesh lining. And yeah, it's, start, it's starting to look like the shape of the Skims swimsuit. Perfect. Yeah, it's got that nice uh, side slope there. So this is where I'm attaching my straps uh, to the front and the back. Um, so I've started by uh, doing a holding stitch, att attaching, attaching my bra strap to the, the top shoulder there. Um, and then <clears throat> I'm just allowing uh, the, the, the strap to not interfere with the seam allowance so that when I bag it out, um, it's got a nice uh, clean finish. I think I've stitched it about a, a centimetre uh, seam allowance down. So I've only stitched it to the, out, the outer fabric, the, the Lycra. And then I've gone into the back now. And what am I doing here? Cool, so this is where I'm attaching the tabs onto the back of my swimsuit. And, I, and I'm attaching tabs because I'm using hooks. I mean, you can use uh, rings as well. And the thing is, if you wanted to add a bit of extra reinforcement, you can actually fuse the top parts um, that uh, the, the, the top parts are where you're sewing on your tabs, just to strengthen the fabric a bit. Cool. So this is where I've attached the the, the tabs and the straps onto the lycra part. Now this is where I'm. Uh, attaching that to the lining. So this is where you start the bagging out process. So at this stage, you're sewing everything inside out. Cool, just turning that to check that it looks nice. Looks good. As I said, guys, like with all of my tutorials, the more you progress with the garment, the more difficult it it gets to to do the finishing. So the more, what am I saying? The, the further you go with your garment, the more time you should take making sure that the, the details look right. You, you don't want to rush it. I think by the looks of it, I'm bagging out the second strap on the front. And then now I'm uh, bagging out the straps on, I think the first strap on the back. And then this is where I've, I've um, bagged out all my straps at the top, at the top shoulder and the back shoulder. And then I'm sewing my neckline and my armhole. And then as you can see, I'm using uh, the, the swimmer rubber uh, that's going to reinforce that armhole, um, the armhole silhouette and the neckline silhouette. What you guys should do is if you buy a swimsuit from, I don't know, any of the kind of high street chains, open it up and then just look at the inside and you will see that they've used either this this particular sumo rubber or they've used what's called framelon which is the same thing just a see-through version and this will help the garment keep its shape over numerous wears and numerous washes so
also the, the advantage that we have, uh, what I have in making this garment is that um, our machine has an attachment that fuses, uh, sorry, what was all about, that um, feeds the, the rubber through. Although I haven't used it on this example, um, that neckline looks really nice. Everything, everything looks even. Um, when you're when you're at factory level, having these kind of attachments helps the efficiency of making by 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 times ten. So if you've got an industrial overlocker, you can go to uh, the supplier that you've got it from, and just tell them that you want an, a, a foot attachment that helps feed through uh, framelon or su sumo rubber. And I think it's relatively cheap, probably about 12, 15 pounds for the, for the foot. So I think at this point, I'm probably sewing the um, outer armhole of one of the sides of, of the garment. Now, what you guys can do to make your job easier is, is do that holding stitch on your straight stitch first. Um, so you attach the, the lining and the lycra with a five millimeter straight stitch, and then you can do the overlocking, feeding through your, uh, your rubber. So getting to the hard part now, um, use like a pair of tweezers or uh, just like a small pair of scissors just to help uh, that last bit of the rubber just feed through nicely. Cool, so I just want to check that I've got that nice clean shape on the underarm. And then I'm gonna do the, the last part, which is probably the, the, back, the back neck um, of my swimsuit. I remember guys, you're sewing everything inside out at this point. One thing that um, if you've got a really good pattern, then, then you've got notches marked in there. And, and a notch is just a small kind of incision into the edge of the fabric, no more than about two, three millimeters long. That helps you match up uh, two parts of fabric together. So if, I've got my neckline here. I've got the lining and the, uh, the lycra to stitch together. I'm probably gonna put at least one notch to mark the center point of the neckline. And I know that uh, having that notch means that the, the, the fabric has been fed through in, in a balanced way. See, that last part was really tricky even for me, but, but that's pretty much it. Everything's been stitched and I'm using that small hole in the lining to push all of the garment back out. That, that hole should be no more than about five, six centimeters long, but that's more than enough to, to feed the rest of the, 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 the garment through. And now you need to do a really nice press. If you haven't got an industrial kind of iron, uh, just use a lot of steam, but use like a, a cotton cloth or, or a flannel just to protect the fabric. But you want the steam to relax the, the, the rubber underneath and the lycra. What you, what you won't see, because I've uh, done this footage sped up, I probably spent a good five to 10 minutes pressing uh, every area of the swimsuit. And it's okay, because at this point, if there's any parts that just aren't sitting how they should do, then just redo it. Those of you that do have an industrial iron board and an industrial iron, 
uh, as much as you're using the steam, use the pedal for the vacuum board as well, because that's going to help the uh, the fabric uh, the fabric cool down quicker, and also um, help the fabric to stay in its in the state that it should do. So yeah, I'm just pressing the thigh line there. Really making sure all those seams are flat, making sure that my lining sits on the in, inner side of the garment. So I'm pressing things flat, pressing them together. And I'm also inspecting the different areas of the garment as I'm pressing it. Cool, that looks really nice. That's a really smooth finish, very happy with that. So the last part is just to put in my um, adjusters and uh, rings, or in my case, hooks. So you get your strap, you do like an in one part and then back out on itself, but you don't pull everything through. Then you get your hook, loop that, loop that into the hole and then bring it back around in itself. And you bring it back around the first slider and then back into itself. And then you stitch it closed and that should lock in uh, your strap. And then you can adjust it how you see fit. You might wanna get a pair of scissors or a pair of tweezers just to help you, help you feed through. Um, the end of your strap. So I'm just doing a, a lock stitch there to hold everything in place. Good, that looks nice and secure. Now I'm just doing, I'm just running this clip again for you guys, uh, doing a much, uh, a, a much more close, close up view just so you can see the detail of what, what exactly I'm doing. So that's the first stage, in and out of the slider. And that's my hook, into the hook. Back through that slider. And then bring it back around into the other hole. So you probably want to leave about a centimeter or two excess and then stitch that down. Or if you do have a bar tack, you can use that because that's what we would normally do in production. Give it a good tug to make sure everything's securely locked in. And then you hook it onto that tab at the back of your, your garment. So this is the, the, the same technique that they'll use on bras as well. It's no different. And it's going to take a final inspection of the finished product. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that's a 10 out of 10 match with the, with the Skims uh, swimsuit. And bear in mind, I didn't have the garment uh, on hand to, to copy the, the pattern. Um, this is what I did myself and yeah, I think that's all right. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the skim swimsuit coming up now. And here comes the swimsuit that I've just made. So I took things further and this video actually inspired me to do my own swimwear collection. And I'm gonna include the link in the description below. The making time for this swimsuit took me two hours and 12 minutes. As always, I would love to hear feedback. Post in the comments ideas of videos that you want me to do next. Also, if you're thinking of starting your own swimwear line and you need some advice from an expert, get in touch and book a consultation with me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.